Thank you. Well, most of you know I'm so nervous. So I'm here to talk about how women will take their place in the boardroom. How many people in here are on a board now? How many people plan on being a board? On a board. Okay, every hand should go up in here. Let me ask that again. How many people in here plan on being on a board? Thank you. Thank you very much. No, I actually have somebody to say. So, about a week ago, I was having a conversation with another woman business owner. And she's very accomplished. She, uh, she has a million dollar business. She has two kids. She's a technology genius. And she knows how passionate I am about being on boards and women being on boards. And she said to me, you know what, Marissa, I really don't think I'm board worthy. And I thought about that term, and I never had really heard that term. And it really surprised me that she would say, I'm not worthy. And I said to her, why don't you think you're worthy to be on a board? And she said, well, you know, I don't really know the right people, and I don't really have the right skill set, and I really don't have a lot of value to add to a big board. So in her mind, she basically had said that that was out of her realm of capability and possibility. And what I'm here to tell you tonight in the next 10 to 15 minutes is what I told her. Anyone who is thinking that they're not board worthy, you are dead wrong. Not only are you, every single person I'm talking in here to, board worthy, but you are board essential. And the time has never been better than right now for you to get your mind around the idea of board service. So here's just a few statistics. Did you know that 60% of the 60,000 jobs in Silicon Valley last year went to women? 60% of 60,000 technology jobs went to women in Silicon Valley. We took over Silicon Valley last year with jobs. And 60% of all college graduates last year were women. We are in the majority for college graduates. And there has never been more women in the workforce than now. There are almost 70 million women in the workforce. And not only did we gain back all the jobs that we lost in the recession, but we have exceeded where we were. We own the corporate market. We are gaining traction in Silicon Valley, on the campuses, in the corner office, everywhere. And it is time for us to take the boardroom. So when we were listening earlier um, from your speech about women's power and women's wealth, okay, two-thirds of consumer wealth will belong to women within the next decade. We make more than 80% of the buying purchases, so buying decisions. So if that's the case, don't you think that we should be at those boardrooms? If we're buying these products, from GE and Procter and & Gamble and all of the large companies out there and even the smaller companies, we're the ones who are buying them. Shouldn't we have a say in their strategy? Shouldn't we have a say in where these companies are going? They're selling to us. We are padding their pockets. We are escalating their stock prices. We should have a place at their table. It also makes sense financially. The latest research that came out about women on boards is that companies that have women board members have a higher rate of return than companies that do not. They average 14% higher rate of return compared to companies that do not have women on boards. 
it is a financially a no-brainer for women to be in the boardroom. And the third reason why this is so important from a macro level, from a world level, okay, is that the worst thing that could happen is that a board puts a token woman on their board just to check the diversity box, okay? We need at least two women on boards to have a voice. So your fellow women who are out there getting on boards, well, guess what? They need you as a co-pilot. You need to be on the boards with them so that they can be effective. Because one woman is silent, basically. But you put two or more of us together, and we are powerful. So we need you in there. I serve on a couple of boards, both uh, you know, nonprofit as well as for profit. And I was just asked to be on the board of a great company in Fairfax. I love what they're doing. I had a lot of synergy with them. I love the leader of the company. I believe in the mission. But what put me over the edge is that I was recruited by this phenomenal woman who is a mover and shaker. And I know that if I'm sitting next to her on that boardroom, we are going to make things happen. So we need you at the macro level to be in the boardroom so that the other women who are already in there can have a stronger voice. That's why we need you. So what does this mean for you? You might be saying, well, that's all great, Marissa, and it makes great financial sense, and I hear that the other women need me. But really, where do I come into play? How is this going to help me? Well, first of all, your own capability is going to go through the roof. You are going to learn so much from serving another leader, okay? You will be able to apply your capabilities that you already have. And every single person in here is qualified to serve. Your credibility will go up. Having board service on your resume and on your bio, this is what it tells the world. It says, I was chosen. I am a leader. I have a voice. And I give back. Okay? It is critical for your own career path to be serving on boards. And the other reasons? is it elevates your network and your net worth. When you go into a boardroom, and God knows I've become the expert on boards, okay? When a board comes together, how many of you know who Napoleon Hill is? Okay, the Napoleon Hill concept of masterminding basically says that when you bring multiple minds together, you create another mind. Well, that is exactly what happens in a boardroom. Okay, so the network that you will have will expand exponentially. If you're around a board table with five or six other people, you are now expanding your network, not only with those people, but with all the other people that they know. And you're basically entering into a different type of club. So it will expand your network. It also expands your net worth because most board positions pay monetarily, they pay cash, but they also pay equity. So you are getting paid with a percentage of a growing company. This is a whole other way to increase your own net worth. So those are just some of the reasons why you should be thinking that board service is good for you. So there are two organizations that I, that I really like. I mean, there's a lot of companies, a lot of organizations popping up that are helping women serve on boards. Two of the ones that I have a lot of respect for and that I'm involved in are Women in the Boardroom in New York, and it's run by a woman named Sheila Ronning, and then the, the Leadership Foundry, which is out of DC's Women in Technology. Both of them have exceptional training and learning programs for women to get them board ready, okay? So I talked to Sheila, and I asked her, what are really the main characteristics that boards are looking for? And there's a couple of, of shifts that have happened in the, in the board environment. Just five years ago, the main skill set that was required, really, was financial expertise. Can you read a balance sheet? Do you know profit and loss? Do you understand EBITDA? All of the different financial metrics that, honestly, might have scared some women away, or maybe they just weren't interested, or maybe they didn't think that that was something that they could contribute. 
Today, what's happening in companies is there is a need for board members that have a broad range of skill sets. They need e-commerce, they need social media expertise, they need marketing, they need education, they need communications, they need cultural experience, they need diversity experience. All of the things that you're all doing every day in your job, those skills and expertise, they are needed in the boardroom. It isn't just about surrounding the boardroom with people who know finance and people who can bring money to the table. That was the old boardroom. The new boardroom needs your skill sets, okay? So that's the first thing that they're looking for. The second thing is integrity. And you know what? Women rock integrity, okay? We live and breathe integrity. We do what we say we're going to do and they need integrity. The third thing that they need is leadership skills. And every single person sitting in here, if you are involved in an organization, whether you're titled as CEO or manager or director, or if you're a mom, guess what? You're a leader. So they need your leadership skills. And the fourth thing, which is so important, is mindset. And I will tell you that our obstacles to board service are not men, our obstacles are not lack of opportunity. Our obstacles are ourselves, thinking that we are not good enough, okay? Our obstacles are our quest and our obsession with perfectionism. You don't need to be perfect to put yourself out there for board service, but you do need to want to do it, and you need to believe in yourself. And these are the four things that boards are looking for. At Women in the Boardroom in New York, last year, Sheila had two requests for women to serve on boards. This year so far, she's had 26. We went from two to 26 in one organization, okay? They need women on boards. So the time is now. This is our time. And I want you all to repeat this after me. I am board worthy. I am board worthy. I am board essential. I am board essential. And I am boardroom bound. I am boardroom bound. Will I see you in the boardroom? Yes. All right. Thank you.